We've all heard snippets of Edvard Grieg's Concerto in A Minor, Opus 16, in the score for the movie The Seventh Veil, in commercials for Nike and Range Rover, and even in the strange television series Twin Peaks. But nothing beats hearing it live, played by a superb young pianist, as was the case February 25th at Chrysler Hall. Natasha Petremsky is not yet a household name, but she's very likely to become one as familiar as the music she played Saturday night. Performing from memory, Petremsky had it all, from crashing power to pianissimo nuance. Her arms and hands were very fluid and relaxed, a sign of excellent technical training. Hers began in Moscow, where she was born only 24 years ago, emigrating with her family to the United States in 1995. The melodic, richly romantic work, Grieg's only concerto, was in formidably capable hands. Petremsky intently navigated trickling rills of notes that swelled to great cascades, delicate Norwegian folk motifs, huge clusters of commanding chords, great sweeping melodies. It was awesome. Joanne Folletta led the Virginia Symphony Orchestra in perfect balance with the young soloist, bringing out the rich cellos and basses of the first movement. The beautiful flute theme, like the first glimpse of spring, and the incisive increase in intensity at the end of the third movement. Petremsky's encore, a rarely performed etude tableau by Rachmaninoff, was thoughtful, powerful, pensive, and emphatic, ringing all the emotional changes with ease. The Chrysler's drop-down screens and rear projectors are meant to make a soloist more visible. They were not working properly appearing horribly and distractingly overexposed like some weird Warhol video of a yellow ghost. Fortunately, they were turned off during the second movement. Good. Keep them off. The evening's opener was the overture to Danish composer Carl Nielsen's comic opera Mascarat, a joyful perky piece with everything going at once. It made me want to see the opera sometime. After all the fireworks in the first half, you might think the second half would be anticlimactic. Not so. The Great Symphony No. 5 and B-flat by Sergei Prokofiev got a reading that brought out all its sonorous magnificence. Written in 1944 and premiered in Moscow in 1945, it began with low, portentous rumblings that brought thunderclouds to mind and kept the timpanist on the hop. The second movement had more of the earlier Prokofiev, light and airy, with urgent skirls of woodwinds and subtle percussion before turning suddenly warlike. The third movement tapered down, down, down to its finish, not easy to do with a large orchestra, and Folletta had its measure completely. The clarinet theme in the final movement recalled the gorgeous melodies of the composer's earlier Romeo and Juliet. The percussion section was crisply intent. Think what was happening in Russia and Europe in 1944 and marvel at how Prokofiev managed to capture the final days of the war with affirmation, even joy. It was quite an evening. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge.